Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert, coming to you from Scottsdale, Arizona, and I am the patient advocate at Brio Medical Center. I know we are, we are missing Dr. Goodyear today, but I have this amazing opportunity, a, a very special treat for me to come to you and share with you what it is like to go through a cancer treatment uh, for six weeks here at Brio Medical. I am the patient advocate. My name is Robert Quintanilla, and I am very happy that you are taking the time to learn about one of the most important aspects uh, when deciding where to go for treatment. I understand um, knowing who the doctor is, the type of therapies, and, and vitamins, and the treatment itself is very important to be knowledgeable about. But another element beyond that will solidify an amazing experience so that we can get the best outcome is how you navigate through the program with advocacy in place. And so my goal tonight is to uh, present to you and share with you my knowledge uh, from the point of view or the eyes of the patient advocate as you come in to our clinic here in Scottsdale for a total of seven weeks. I, we will have an, an opportunity to do uh, uh, questions and answers in a little bit, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, my name is Robert. I was born in El Salvador, and I came to the, to the, to the United States at the age of 10. And um, I have had an amazing opportunity to to be here and, and, and be a positive influence. About nine years ago, my wife was diagnosed with a very unique and um, rare type of autoimmune disease, scleroderma. And that was my first experience as a family member or participant when a loved one is sick with a disease that is not understood or has no cure Diagnosis can be um, a difficult one. So that was my first introduction to understanding the, the mechanisms of the body and how we, patient advocates or participants or family member companions, can be so instrumental to the, the wellness and, 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 and the longevity uh, uh, of life for our family members. So... Let me share this with you. Uh, when my wife was diagnosed, uh, we approached the conventional way of treatments. We lived in Southern California, and UCLA was the location that was uh, closest to us that had the best doctors in the world. So um, my wife was diagnosed in 2014, and we participated in multiple uh, treatments and her condition was not getting well. So after about three years of uh, conventional treatments, we opted to look for alternative treatments. Um, we met some amazing people that became our advocates. They put their arms around us, and they presented to us a different option, which was uh, natural treatments, um, integrative oncology type of treatments, and really important, the different type of therapy devices that exist out there that can be beneficial for a person's well-being. So we visited um, Arizona from California, and we were introduced to some amazing doctors, some incredible people that gave us our first introduction to natural alternative therapies. And over the last nine years, I'm happy to say that my wife continues to enjoy a wonderful life and she, because she adopted or embraced the different therapies that were available to us then and made some important adjustments to her way of life, dietary, um, um, the way she eats, and it give, gave us or gave her the opportunity to live a normal life as best as possible. Uh, it's hard work. 
And so that was my first experience uh, in becoming a participant or family member support, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit. In 2017, I had the opportunity to be a patient companion for a great friend and mentor who was very sick, and we went to Mexico for a seven-week cancer treatment. There, I met some incredible people and was introduced to similar type of treatments that my wife and I had identified during our original search. So that was my first real opportunity to become a patient companion and a patient advocate because my friend uh, did not speak Spanish. And in Tijuana, Mexico, I had the advantage. And so I was able to advocate for my friend as some of the treatments were being conducted and I was able to observe and watch and understand what they were doing. And there were times where I could say, excuse me, can we please help this person over here? He hasn't been attended to in the last few minutes. So um, it was an amazing opportunity for me because then other patients that were sitting uh, asking for help turned to me and said, can you help us get the attention of the nurses that speak Spanish? And so that was my first uh, opportunity to become a patient advocate. A little bit more about myself. Um, In my personal career, I had been a business banker for multiple years with some of the biggest banks in, in the nation. And so my background was in management, uh, customer service, and I was also able to learn about marketing and understanding what it is to be a, a, uh, an overall uh, professional. So when the program ended uh, at the cancer clinic for my friend, I was able to have a conversation with the main medical director And that medical director, um, I was able to share from my point of view as a patient advocate and a patient companion some of the things that they could improve and to help not only patients like my friend, but um, to make it a better experience for everyone. So during those days, uh, the doctor said, if you really feel strongly, would you be Uh, willing to come to Tijuana, Mexico and work for us and set up a patient advocacy program. So that was was my first opportunity to to really get into understanding the needs of the patient from the point of view of the patient and the patient companion. So another important thing that uh, we or I identified was having a clear plan of action for the patient as they navigate through through a program. So fast forward to last year, around this time, um, I received news that my mother had been diagnosed with liver cancer and sh- my mother had retired back to El Salvador. So I took the uh, opportunity to travel back to El Salvador uh, with the support of my wife, my family. I spent almost four months with her in El Salvador as her caretaker. So that was an experience that allowed me to see the needs of a patient that has a terrible disease and the progression of how that disease can harm the body. My mother, uh, sadly, she refused treatments. So I was able to take care of her at home. I was her nighttime nurse from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And um, I learned how to take care of my mother, how to make her comfortable. And um, my mother passed away uh, 
in, in last year, right around this time. And so it was an incredible time for me as I was grieving, uh, as I returned back to the, to the United States, and I received a phone call from Brio Medical um, ownership or management, and Dr. Goodyear wanted me to come and become the patient advocate here at Brio because I bring some qualities, including my heart. I care for people. I cared for my mother. I cared for my mentor. I care for my wife. I care for their well-being. And so with that being my biggest strength and the knowledge of customer service, uh, taking care of, of uh, systems, and it gave me that opportunity to say yes to Dr. Goodyear and join Brio Medical uh, June 5th uh, was when I started here, and it's been the most incredible opportunity. During that time, we have been able to design a comprehensive seven-week treatment program. The program, the, the protocols have been in place by Dr. Goodyear. My contribution is to take care of you when you come to the clinic for seven weeks. You come here, you leave the comfort of your home, you leave your family and loved ones, and you come here to do the hard, hard, hard work, the fight of your life. So I'm going to join you. I'm going to receive you when you come to Brio. I am the first face that you see as I greet you, and then I walk you through the entire program from day one. To the last day when Dr. Goodyear has given you his recommendations and, and a clear understanding what the plan is, your aftercare uh, program, and I'm the last person you see. And I'm here to support you and help you understand what happens. So that being my quick introduction of who I am and why I consider myself a highly qualified patient advocate, I like to present to you what the program looks like. And from there, I hope that you can formulate questions and then you let me have it. I'm here to answer your questions because I know that some of you are considering traveling from your home to a foreign location, a place that you maybe have never been to, and be away from your family for seven weeks with the hope and the goal of rejuvenating your body, uh, receiving healing here, here, your entire body. It's our goal. Brio Medical Center is a place of healing, and that's why I'm there. So um, let me paint the picture of what it looks like when you come in for uh, therapies here at Brio Medical. So there's seven weeks total. The first week, which we call week zero or orientation week, it, it's comprised of three basic days. The first day when you arrive, I greet you and I help you navigate the first couple of steps. There are a few medical procedures that we do, taking your temperature, your vitals, maybe a little bit of blood for labs, and then some paperwork, and then I introduce you to the medical director. I walk you to his office, make the introduction, and you get to spend time with the medical director and understand what his plan looks like. You get to ask him questions. You get to understand what the plan of action is, and for the most part, at that point, you know whether you are in the right place or not. From there... I take you to the next uh, professional, maybe a doctor, maybe a, uh, a, a provider. M in most cases, you meet Anita. Anita is the emotional, mental, and spiritual support. 
we want to take care of your spirit. We want to take care of your mind and your heart while, you, while Dr. Goodyear wants to take care of your body. So that's another important element that we will implement throughout the program. And after you meet Anita, I will give you a comprehensive tour, introduce you to the medical staff as we walk around and see the different medical devices, uh, the different treatment uh, rooms, introducing you to some of the uh, um, some of the patients that are there, and I'll share this with you. Here's a tip for you: whenever you go to a cancer center to check it out, talk to the patients. The patients will tell you how it is for them. And from there, you'll be able to understand, evaluate what the conditions are. So um, after the comprehensive tour, I give you your schedule for the following day. We talk about different topics on the second day. You meet the oncologist. You meet other providers. We talk about whether you get a port or a pick. What does that mean? We get to talk about how we are going to introduce these IVs into your body, whether it's a port, which is a line that goes through here, and it goes into your heart, or, or to the vena cava, so we draw blood there, and or a port, which is a surgical procedure. I'm not going to get into medical stuff, but those are conversations that we have right away to make sure that we are ready for therapies. And on the third and final day, you get to meet some of the other staff members and, and uh, support team, such as the nutritionist, the lymphatic drainage massage therapist, acupuncturist, naturopaths. So we have a full team that will evaluate you, and you get to evaluate us and we come to a point where the doctor sets up your plan of care. The contribution from the different doctors that you will meet. Dr. Goodyear has a comprehensive plan of care, and he shares that with me and the medical staff. So Monday morning, week one of therapies of six weeks, you're mine. We work together. And so... I, I help you navigate through the first week. The f week of orientation, we don't do any treatments. Week one of therapies is what I call acclimation week. You will acclimate to the program. It's a full day of work. You come in at nine and we go through an entire process where we draw, where we draw blood for labs Monday morning and we put you through a battery of devices treatments, IVs, massages, uh, detoxifying saunas, hyperbaric chamber, whole body hyperthermia, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, red light therapy, oxygen therapy, ozone therapy. It's a lot of work. May sound intimidating right now, but I've got you. I will shadow you for a couple of days, making sure I introduce you to the team to the nurses that will be taking care of you, I go over Dr. Goodyear's plan of action in detail for that first week so that you acclimate to the program. Your body will acclimate to the program too. Let me say that differently. Your body will acclimate to the different therapy energy treatments. Your, your, your body will acclimate to the different IVs and, and, and medicines being provided. And so there is a, a, uh, a time frame where your body will start to feel the difference. I see a lot of patients come in in wheelchairs or they need assistance because the bodies are depleted. By the end of the first week, most of those patients are doing it on their own. I had the most incredible, and I don't want to digress on, on, on stories right now, but the most incredible patient I have worked with, 80, 82 years old, Mumsy, that's, that's what we called her. 
Mumsy. And she came in in a wheelchair. And so I was concerned for her well-being as we navigated through the program the first few days. By the second week, she was doing it on her own. By the end of the program, no one could keep up with her. So um, your body will acclimate to, to, to the program, especially during the first week. And that's where I want to make sure that you're okay. Week two and three are a progression of the uh, understanding of the program. But now you're up and running. Now you will be introduced to more challenging, or let me say that differently, uh, more intensive treatments, such as whole body hyperthermia, which is a treatment that uh, it's highly effective. Dr. Goodyear had an amazing po podcast two weeks ago, two weeks ago, and, and uh, I would highly recommend you refer that if you have any questions about hyperthermia, but my experience is that when patients come in for whole body hyperthermia, they're scared. They're scared. Uh, it, it's an intense treatment. The body is heated up to a level where your core temperature rises to fever level. 104 degrees is usually the target for a duration of about two hours. And so... Um, as the patient advocate, I make sure that you understand the, the, um, the consent form, the disclosures, the checklist, how you prepare for it. And we have an amazing team. We have an incredible team that will take care of you. And so I help you understand that we've got you. And so um, there are usually high fives and, and, and funny jokes at the end of each treat, at the end of the, of the whole body hyperthermia treatment when people say, oh, hot lady coming by, you know, because uh, they did it. They got it done, right? And so by, by the end of the program, patients are veterans of the whole body hyperthermia and there's a batch of honor that they got it done. So we will get acclimated to that. We will understand. During those first couple of weeks, I really want you to wrap your hands, your heads around a very important concept that I learned when I went through my previous experiences, which is understanding what's happening. Why are the doctors asking me to do pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. Why? What's the purpose? It, it opens up the microcapillaries, allowing for better blood flow. As I'm dripping all these vitamins and minerals and good things into my body, uh, being treated in pressurized oxygen and having pure oxygen, breathing pure oxygen before a treatment, uh, having special hydration with microclustered water or structured water, uh, alkaline structured water. So all these things go hand in hand and it permits for better blood flow, better hydration, better oxygenation, better quantum nutrition, and now your body's going to respond. So understanding that is key because as we progress through the treatment program towards the end, uh, by week number four or five, we are talking about what does the rest of your life look like? What does the rest of your, your next chapter look like when you go home? Because the program is finite. It ends. And one of the things I hear regularly from patients is, I feel so safe here with you and the nurses and the doctors, and I can come in and I can do all these things and I feel great, but going to end and then I go home back to my old life so do I go back to the way I used to live the way I used to eat um, be in the same environments that I used to be in that's the key if you can understand that certain environments certain um, habits nutritional changes 
are going to make a big difference. But one of the biggest differences is embracing the therapies. Dr. Goodyear will give you a list of therapies that you should continue doing when you go home. If you continue doing these things, your body will continue the momentum. And the rest of your life looks like this. And so my goal is to walk you through the program and teach you, educate you on, on why it's so important to have um, hyperbaric chamber treatments, why ozone treatments are so beneficial to the body, drinking structured water, and so many different things. And so that is part of the, my plan or my goal as you uh, go through this process. I will also share with you some of my personal thoughts about um, in support of your mental and emotional health, how to um, de-stress, uh, what treatments are good for re relaxing or de-stressing, meditation, things like that are some of the things that we will talk about. And towards the end of the program, week five and six, the doctors are now reviewing your progress. They are gathering all the data and they present to you, this is how your body has responded to the entire program, to the therapies, and here's the momentum. Continue doing these therapies and here's your aftercare plan or after the program plan of action. Once the program ends, once you go home, you still have our support. We have a robust aftercare, <clears throat> excuse me, aftercare plan for you uh, with support as you will meet Dr. Goodyear one more time. A couple of other doctors will be available to you to follow up with you. I will be there to support. I will continue to be the bridge of communication between you, the staff, the medical team, and of course myself. So that's the picture of a total of seven weeks when you come to Brio Medical Center. And so I hope I've said a few things that may spark a question. And so with that, I'm speaking to my producer, Aaron. Any questions? We have questions. Okay. So let me take a quick look. Oh, boy. I'm a slow reader, reader so bear with me a little bit. Okay. Thank you. The first question from Janet. Janet, this is a very, very good question. How do I prepare myself to walk through this with my husband? I'm nervous. He has stage four pancreatic. Thank you. That's an important question because you are the support team. You are the one that is most likely doing a lot of the research. You are the one that will most likely be, be sitting next to your husband's um, whole body hyperthermia treatment pod, keeping vigil. So the way you prepare yourself is you, you are already doing it. You are already making that decision to show up for your husband. And I'm now talking to the patient companions because when you come to Brio Medical Center, I'm not just taking care of your husband or your mother or your brother or your sister. I'm also taking care of you. I will help you navigate through the program too. Um, this, and this is really important. You will have so much support when you come here because we become a family. We, we build a bond, nurses and patients, patients and doctors, companions and staff members, doctors. We all 
come together because we are in this fight together. And so you will have the support of the nurses, the, the medical team, myself, and the most beautiful thing is that you also connect with other patients and patient companions and uh, amazing friendships are established the last years. So um, I am answering your question by encouraging you to continue to make that decision to show up. Everything else, Janet, will fall into place. I hope that answers that question, Tracy. Tracy, uh, Tracy M wants to know how hard is it on children if you can talk about or if I can talk about how much um, how much I should bring. Okay, so bringing children into a treatment program like this or um, the family member has children. I'm going to tell you a story, a quick story, uh, Martha. Um, a patient that just completed the program came from Tennessee, Tennessee, with her husband and eight kids. And so range, rate, ages ranging from 12 to uh, an eight-month-old. Okay? And so... I wish I could show you some of the pictures. The kids would come to the, to the clinic. And um, one of the things that we do is we prepare or structure water for patients. And um, the kids loved coming to the clinic to not only drop off mom. And they would line up and they would hug and kiss. And they would also come back and pick up structured water. So... I'd had an opportunity to show them a few things here and there. And look, this is what mom is doing. And mom is working hard. And there were hugs and kisses. And so it was a privilege seeing the kids knowing that mom was doing the hard thing because mom wanted to be there for her kids. And so her support team showed up for her. So, yes, kids do come and they visit the clinic. Um, I will say this, as far as the operation part of it is concerned, we cannot have kids in the therapy treatment areas, but come into the lobby, say hello, and, um, and, and they are welcomed. Okay. So let's see. So Martha, uh, great questions. Where do patients live? So as far as our um, medical center is concerned, we have uh, affiliations with different communities in, 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 in the vicinity, um, apartments, uh, condos, houses that can be um, uh, rented out for the duration of the treatment uh, with special arrangements already made in advance and uh, in the understanding that you are here for a short term to do your treatment. So, um, that's a great question. And when you reach out to us, our patient coordinator has all that information. And so James will, will be happy to share that information with you when you reach out to him. Okay. Ah, great. Um, Martha, again, great question. So what happens is when you come to Brio Medical and we complete the, the program on your plan of care or the aftercare uh, program, uh, Dr. Goodyear makes recommendations of different treatments such as uh, infusions of vitamins, okay? And so my goal, my job is to help you identify in your community where you can find these therapies, such as uh, energy therapies, um, vitamin infusions, uh, oxygen therapies. And so everybody's different. 
the United States is such a big place, and so every geographical area may have different adjustments. So in my experience, we see Dr. Goodyear's plan of care, and you and I have already anticipated as I am trying to educate you throughout the program, where you can find um, a hyperbaric chamber for treatments in your community of whatever the city is. And so, yes, I will help you identify throughout the program and before it ends where you can get or, or continue therapies at home. Let me say that differently. In your community. But... There's also an element of you can have a lot of these things at home, too. And we can talk about that. Okay. I appreciate your question, question David. Um, how many people can you bring into the treatment, treatment area with you? So, um, we have a patient right now that has six or seven family members. Um, and they all want to be so supportive. And we have a unique opportunity when having treatments where patients are mobile. They go back and forth. And so they have this entourage <laughs> going back and forth. And so uh, our facilities have this beautiful courtyard. And it's open tables. So a lot of the family members, companions, follow the patient but they usually stay in the common areas in the lobbies so do you want to bring six people with you i've seen it i've seen it in the treatment areas only the patient is usually permitted maybe one support member or family member uh, because we have limited space and we have nurses that are walking around with needles and so we want to make sure that those areas are reserved for the patient and the medical staff. But, hey, David, bring your family. I'll talk to them. I'll make friends with them. Okay? So, um, but generally, I see two. That's, that's really what I see. Um, two family members is what I see. And let me interject that sometimes there are, there are patients... You may be watching right now that will not have a support person with you. You are flying by yourself. So I'm here for you. I'm here to help you and, and support you. And so, um, or we can get, borrow one family member from another family so that you can have one. No, just kidding. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? Aaron, how are we doing on time? Okay. Victory says, I have been looking for clinics, breast cancer, stage two, uh, the seven week in the seven week intensive seems like a lot. What are your thoughts? Okay, so let me answer this way because based on my experience, for I've talked to many doctors who run clinics like this, and my understanding is that if we introduce different vitamins and minerals and good things to your body, uh, put you through pro, uh, um, therapies that are good for your body, your body will respond will have a natural response. And so how long does that take? Everybody's different. And I don't want to get into specifics, but generally, for what I have seen, uh, three weeks is the minimum you want to have exposure to these good things for your body. From there, what I see is the takeoff. Week four and five, is when the body begins to pick up momentum. And so that momentum is what really uh, encourages uh, the medical team to say, okay, now you can go home and continue the momentum by doing all these therapies and you continue the therapy. So 
just because the program is only five weeks or seven weeks or three weeks doesn't mean that we stop you stop you continue so um the medical team has identified that six weeks is the time that is very likely your body will pick up that momentum if that makes sense i hope that answers your question let's see Um, Susan says or asks if there's a special program for those trying to prevent uh, recurrence. And um, great question. So, yes, yes, absolutely. What we want is to encourage you to continue doing certain therapies, including things like uh, personalized peptides, for example. Personalized, pep personalized peptides is this um, amino acid that is that is key to the proper communication of cells. And if those cells are behaving in the way that they are um, programmed by DNA, then we can encourage your immune system, your body, to behave properly and function correctly. So uh, that would be something that would be highly encouraged by the medical team when they see that your momentum is taking off. So can you continue coming to do regular therapies? I'm sure, yes, of course. Um, we don't stop doing therapies, but personalized peptides can be a whole new level of, of working on prevention and, uh, and that it's highly recommended by Dr. Goodyear in many cases. Great question. Okay. It looks like we're running out of questions and running out of time. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for showing up to uh, this quick podcast. I know I, you were waiting for Dr. Goodyear, but um, it's been a treat for me. It's been uh, a great opportunity I hope that this has helped uh, spark new questions and feel free, give me a call. I'd be happy to help. With that being said, thank you and I bid you a good night.